Hi everybody, Elizabeth here with Country Peony. I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome to episode 30 of Coffee and Crafting. And today we're gonna to be making something that I love so much. We are making, excuse me, we are making these adorable felted floral brooches. I'm actually wearing mine today. I think it's so beautiful. The felting process is so gorgeous. It reminds me of a vintage inspired feel because honestly, it is a very old craft and it's so, so beautiful. And I wanted to make this for you today because not only does it inspire you for spring, but I'm hoping that it'll want you to get started to needle felts because needle felting has brought me so much joy. It is so much fun. And honestly, it's super therapeutic. So welcome to this episode of Coffee and Crafting. I'm so happy to have you here today. Please let me know where you're coming from and honestly, how I can help you on your needle felting journey. So let's get started. Okay, if you want to get started on your needle felting journey, you are in great luck because I created a needle felting 101 beginner friendly needle felting course just for you. It really walks you through the basics of needle felting, how to start needle felting, and it's such a fun and easy course that honestly, there's video components, and then there's also PDF components, there's tutorials, and it's a really easy course to walk through. You can do it at your own pace. And today, I'm offering you the course for $20. So it's normally $47, but if you use the code LIVE in the coupon, Whenever you check out, you can get the course for $20, which is such a steal. So please let me know if you have any questions about the course. I would love to have you in the course because honestly, I just want you to start needle felting. Okay, so today, as I mentioned, we are going to be making these floral brooches. I'm wearing mine now. They are so cute. You can follow the same technique um, to even make your own version of this. I truly just want to show you how simple it is to start needle felting. And I recently taught a needle felting class at Alt Summit, which is a craft. Um, it's also a creative summit for uh, women entrepreneurs. It was so much fun and we made these uh, brooches as well. So you can apply the same technique. I just took a heart cookie cutter for this one. And then I added these fun stencils, which I'm gonna show you how to do today. Okay, so for this specific project, and I will keep this here on my heart so that you can see it throughout the entire tutorial today. But if you have any questions, again, the course below is $20 today. If you use the code LIVE, um, that's linked below. I've also got a blog post with some incredible um, content in there if you wanna start beginning your needle felting journey. I've also got a free tool guide that basically tells you every single tool I love and why I love it and where you can get it from. And then some of my favorite tools linked below if you wanna check that out. And I am an open book as far as needle felting goes. So if you ever have any questions, my messages are always open. Okay, so let's get started. If you want to make your own floral brooch, um, you're going to start off, we're gonna use, this is a wool felt, a crafting felt. And so um, I just found this at my local crafting store, but you can even use some of the craft felt. This is 100% wool, it's not polyester, so it's really fun to work with. Um, and then you're going to need your needle felting supplies. So to get these really fun shapes, these floral shapes, I like to use a stencil and this is called a felting stencil, and I've linked it below in my tool guide, but it allows you to make these really fun shapes with your felting projects. And then, as far as the needle felting tools go, if I were to invest in one tool today, it would be this pen style needle felting tool. This is by Clover. You have the option of using three needles or one for your projects, it's fabulous. And then you definitely need a mat, and I like this large mat from Clover as well. And then you don't have to, but you can also invest in this needle felting tool, which has five needles in it, so it allows you to needle felt really quickly. Hello, Mariana, it's so good to see you this morning. Um, and then for this project, I also recommend this claw um, as well as a mat cleaner. 
And then you can also honestly just get started by using single felting needles. And yes, these are different than regular needles because they have barbs on the end of them. And then some sharp scissors. And then if you want to turn it into a brooch like I'm wearing, um, I would recommend getting um, some fabric glue. Beacon's Fabri-Tac is my favorite. And then you're also going to need a pin backing. So I bought a whole bunch of these from my course. It's just some simple pin backings that I got on Amazon. So again, if you'll have any questions, let me know. And I want to reiterate, if you want to start your needle felting journey today, I'm offering the course today for $20. You can use my code live and you can get the course from $20. It's normally $47, so it's kind of a steal. But again, if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, and then the last thing you're gonna need is wool roving. This is such a fun medium to play with. This is wool that is not, has not been turned into yarn yet. That's essentially what wool roving is. And this is the basis for every single needle felting project. Okay, so the first thing that I do whenever I start a project is I try to figure out my color palette. Color is so important to me. I love to wear color. Um, and I'm only wearing black today so I can showcase this beautiful brooch that I'm wearing. Um, and so for this project, I knew I needed about four different colors. I love the muted look of these colors against this green background. Um, but for today's project, I thought it would be fun to use this as a background. So I decided, honestly, what I did is I went through my wool roving and I just started playing with how they would look off of this. And I landed on these three colors for the flowers because I thought they were really pretty. And then this muted green for the leaf and then the yellow for the bow. I just thought all these colors worked really well together. And that's honestly how I came up with my color palette. Um, and so you decide on your color palette, you pull out your wool roving and then you get started. So the first thing that I did was I already made this flower here and then this tiny tulip. So what I did was I went in and I used this tiny uh, stencil for this flower, as you can see here. And then I used this small tulip for this one, as you can see here. It is so cute, it is so fun. And now I'm gonna show you how to use this one to make your first piece, okay? So I'm gonna set those aside. And we're gonna get started on my favorite part, the felting process. Okay, so we're gonna set everything aside. And again, I'm gonna use this larger piece because I wanted a large tulip, a smaller tulip, and then another flower here. And so I'm gonna place my stencil on top of my felting mat. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean my mat. And so I'm just gonna go through making sure I removed all my fibers because you don't want old fibers from an old project integrating into your new project. Okay, so now that the mat is clean, I'm gonna place the stencil on top of my felting mat. And then for this one, I'm gonna use this beautiful pink. Who doesn't love a gorgeous pink for spring? I'm gonna pull it off. You never tear the wool off. Um, you want it to have a nice rough edge like that because it integrates easier. You're gonna break the wool roving apart like so. And then, and the only reason you do that is because it helps to break up the fibers. That way you can felt them together. And I'm just going to place that directly onto my stencil. And you always want to start with a little bit of wool and work your way up. It's really hard to take the wool away once you've started. So I'm just going to place a little bit in there into my largest tulip. And then for this, um, I'm actually going to use my pen style needle felting tool. It has three felted needles in it. And I'm just going to place the wool down and I'm going to start stabbing up and down like so. And I like to work on the outsides of the stencil and then work my way in. Just be very careful not to prick your fingers. These needles are incredibly sharp. And from experience, it does not feel good when you prick your fingers. So you can hear that beautiful felting noise. I'm just going around and felting it. I'm just dabbing up and down. I would love to know if any of y'all have ever tried felting. 
Um, it is so much fun. Someone said, they asked if it takes a long time. Honestly, it can. It just depends on what kind of project you're working on. But the projects that I do, they don't take very long because I focus on beginner projects, something that you can do in 30 minutes because I know y'all are all so busy and I just want y'all to get inspired and to enjoy the process. Okay, so this is a very basic felted, as you can see, it's starting to, the pieces are starting to felt together. And so let me show you again. You can see it's got some gaps around the top of the tulip. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take pieces of that wool roving and we're going to fill in those gaps. And here, since it's a really small area, I find it helpful to use a single felted needle and just kind of make sure that you get that defined edge on there and really just filling in those gaps and those corners like so. Really trying to stay around the edge so that you have a nice crisp edge. That's how you create some beautiful crisp projects. And then I'll set this aside back in my container because I don't want to lose that needle. And then I'll just go back with my felting, pen style needle felting tool and get some of the bigger pieces. I mentioned earlier that this process is so therapeutic and this is why because it's a repetitive motion and it's, to me, it's just super gorgeous, super fun. I see a little bit more gaps. And so I'm going to add some more of this wool roving into those gaps to make sure that I get a nice solid tulip out of this. Um, the only thing I do recommend when you're felting, again, just keep an eye on your needle, making sure you're stabbing up and down you don't want to stab side to side because then you have the possibility of either pricking your finger or breaking your needle. And just being aware of where the needle's at at all times so that you're not hurting your finger. It's very important. Again, I'm going to go back to this pen style tool because three is faster than one when you're felting. And this last tulip leaf, I'm going to add a little bit more to this last one. So you can see we've got a nice rounded and full tulip. So if y'all are on Instagram, I also wanted to tell you about my new Instagram page. It's all about beginner friendly tips for needle felting if you're starting your journey. It's been so much fun. I've been getting so many questions from y'all about needle felting. Um, but my account there is called Felting with Country Peony. So I would love for you to join me there as well. Every day I'm sharing fun tips and tutorials to inspire your needle felting journey. And I just cannot wait for y'all to start felting because it's so much fun. Okay, I think we've got a pretty good and consistent and full tulip working there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully pull it up. And when I say carefully, because it's gonna to wanna to stay in the mat, because you've got all these fibers on this side that have really grabbed into that mat. And I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna work around the edge first. So you can get that nice defined look. And then you're just gonna felt the inside of it. It's so much fun. I promise you, once you start felting and playing with the wool, you're gonna have so much fun. And my tool guide goes over every single tool that you're gonna need and where to get it from. Again, that process is so therapeutic. It sounds so beautiful, just the crunching of the felt into the wool. I love it so much. Okay, so here I have felted it on this side and I'm gonna do it on the other side one or two more times. It's really up to you and what you have time for. Um, again, we're gonna pull it from the base and as you'll see, it's rough again on this side. Um, but don't worry because all you need to do is felt it in a little bit more and then you'll be good to go. That's another question I get. Why are my projects so fuzzy? And it's because they just need to be felted a little bit more. 
And honestly, it's up to you. If you want a little bit more fuzzy um, or you want them really felted together, that's really up to you and what style you're looking for. I tend to lean maybe more fuzzy than I should just because I like that look. It's very, very vintage inspired feel, I think. And it's so much fun. Okay. So look at that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it apart and look how cute that tulip is. I've got to get closer because this is adorable. Look at this. Look how cute this tulip is. It's got a beautiful defined edge and I've got a secret. If you want it a little bit more defined, let me show you. So for those specific areas, you have to be really careful, but what you can do is you can place the needle in between the tulip and that and just to get it really defined like so, okay? And then if your um, tulip is a little too fuzzy for you, so the backing of it is going to be a little bit more fuzzy, that's okay, I've got a little secret. All I do is I kind of shave off the back with some scissors and then you're all good to go. Look how I just love, tulips are one of my favorites. Peonies are number one, but tulips are right up there. And I just think that's so cute, okay. So now we are going to clean our mat. We're going to make sure that our needles are stashed away properly. We're going to clean our mat and we're going to start to create our brooch. Okay, so now the next step, we've got our beautiful flowers ready to go here on the side. And then we are going to start piecing this beautiful brooch together. So the next step is to actually make our leaf. So. We've got this really cute little leaf right here, and I'm gonna show you how to make this. There could be a couple of ways. You could felt it, you could sculpt it, you could use a stencil for it, or my preferred method is just to cut it and make your own leaf. So you're gonna take some uh, green um, wool roving, and for this one, I'm going to use this needle felting tool because it's a little bit easier when you're stabbing um, the surface. And you're just going to stab straight up and down. And this is all you're doing is you're felting this wool together to create this fun little leaf. And then to make it thicker, you can kind of roll it in on itself a little bit. And if you do get nervous by having the needle so close, you can use this claw to kind of hold the wool roving in place. Or you can use finger protectors or finger guards. Honestly, I don't like using them because I feel like they get in the way, but it's it's really just up to you. So we're just starting to felt this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, again, repeat it on the other side, just so you can get a nice, consistent felted piece. And here I'm just stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. And this um, needle felting tool has five needles in it, which is fabulous. It works a lot faster than just one. Okay, I'm going to felt it on this side another time. And you can see why it's important to clean your mat because if you don't, the fibers are going to get into it. Um, and you don't want that. You don't want pink on your leaf and so forth. Okay. I think that's good enough. Good. It's great. Um, so what we have, I have a fun little felted piece and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it in the shape of a leaf to create my own cute little shape. Okay, so there you have it, an adorable little leaf that I just cut, so cute. And so I wanna create some fun little veining on this leaf. And so I'm gonna take this very contrasting green, it's a much brighter green, and I'm gonna take a strand of it and I'm just gonna twist it so it's got a beautiful long little line. And I'm gonna place it directly onto my leaf. I'm gonna hold both sides down and I'm just gonna start felting it into my leaf, as simple as that. Again, avoiding my fingers. And I love needle felting so much because it's so customizable. You can work your way up with these appliques or if you're sculpting a piece, you can see I've got my leaf there and I'm just gonna trim off this vein um, just to show you. And the back is a little bit fuzzier than I'd like, so I'm gonna trim the back off as well. 
And there you have it, an adorable, adorable leaf that's gonna go so cute on this pin. And I'm just assembling, I'm placing my pieces here that are then gonna go onto my brooch. So I think we're at the point where we can start felting everything onto our crafting um, felting wool felt, okay? So um, I'm gonna cut off a piece of this. Let's just make sure that I have enough for it. But I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna do about half of this one. And then I'm just gonna start assembling. And so I'm gonna use this as an example. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my stems. So once I know where I'm gonna place these flowers, I'm gonna put my stems down. I think I like this setup for my flower. Um, and now I'm gonna go in and do my stems first and then I'm gonna do my flowers on top of that. So I'm just gonna place it down onto my mat and I am going to take this green again. This is the same green I used for my leaf and I'm gonna twist it, twist it, twist it to create my fun stems, okay? And I'm gonna do my first one. I'm gonna make sure that they're nice and thin and they're uniform throughout. So you can kind of twist it to get that look. And again, I'm just gonna lay it flat and then I'm gonna felt it into this crafting felt. And it's really cool because the fibers just kind of infuse together on there. And then to finish off the end, I just trim it. Very simple, like so. And then I'll go back over it, making sure it's really on there. It's integrated really well, like so. You can see that's the first stem. And then the second one is going to be coming um, to the side, because that's where the smaller flower is gonna go. So again, I'm just gonna kinda have it starting from here to there. And I'm just gonna felt. And you don't have to be perfect with this. You should just have fun. The ultimate goal is to have fun and enjoy the process. And once I think I felted it enough, I'm going to trim the ends. And then I'm gonna felt it some more so that that stem goes into the other one. And they're kind of bunched together like so. As you can see how fun that is, it's, I love it. Okay, and then the last one, we're gonna make it a little bit shorter and, cause we just want a little bit of variation here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's honestly why I love crafting flowers cause my inspiration is the flowers and none of the flowers are exactly the same as they appear in nature. Okay, so I'm gonna trim that, trim this one, and then I'm going to, again, pierce it down, making sure it's all even. Okay, so now you've got your three stems ready for your flowers. Okay, so now we're going to take the flowers and we're going to attach them directly to the um, crafting felt. We're not even using any glue, which is really cool for this project, for this part. Look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? I'm sorry, I get really excited about this. Okay, the next one is this beautiful tulip. My favorite, my favorite color. And if you want, you can hold it down so it stays in place as you're felting it. Just making sure to take care of your fingers. You don't want to pierce your fingers. I mean, look how cute that is. That is so cute. Okay. And then the last one is this other tulip that just has my heart too. It's so cute. And you can do anything. You can change the colors on this. You can change the flowers. You can make animals. You could do hearts, you could do all kinds of cool things. This could not only be um, a pin, this could also be a flattened bookmark if you want. You can turn this into an ornament. You can do all kinds of really cool things, okay? So I'm going to finish off with this beautiful leaf that we're gonna put 
right, I think we're going to set it right here because why not? Um, yeah, we're just going to set it right there and I'm going to place it again, felt it onto here, making sure it's all on there. Whenever I go thrifting, I'm always inspired um, to create my own projects for this. And so I love to see what's out in the wild when I go thrifting with the vintage pieces. And I love the colors that they use and I love just the shapes and style. So that, that's another inspiration for me. Okay, so we're almost done. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna add this adorable little bow that you see here at the base because why not? And so I'm just going to do a fun pop of yellow since it is spring and colorful. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're taking a piece of the wool roving, we're gonna twist it up, and then we're gonna turn it into a really cute bow. Okay? So I'm just twisting this wool roving, and then I am going to loop it like so. And I'm just going to place it on top of this one. And then I'm going to actually, for this part, I'm going to use the pen style needle felting tool because I want it to be a little bit more detailed and that's the only reason I'm using it for that one. So cute and then I'm going to go to the other side and make the loop on the other side. So adorable. I love it so much. And then I'm actually going to let the, the, um, the, the bottom of the bow just kind of hang freely because why not? It's so cute. There you have it, a really cute little bow to go at the base of your pin. And then from there, I am going to cut the felt. I'm just cutting it. I'm leaving about probably a quarter of an inch around each flower, just so you get that definition. Um, and you can also see that, that uh, crafting felt as well. I'm just trying to loosely mimic the shape of the flower as I'm cutting. It's so fun and so sweet. These kind of projects make me so happy because we're less than 30 minutes out and you can make something really sweet for yourself or for a dear friend um, and have so much fun doing it. That's, that's what it's all about. Look how cute that is. Thank you so much for coming on, Christy. Have you ever tried needle felting? I'm very curious. If not, I highly recommend it. Okay, so here is the finished felting um, floral pin. And then the last thing that you need to do is you need to take the back of your pin and attach it. So for this, I love using my favorite uh, fabric glue. It's Beacon's Fabri-Tac. You're just gonna apply a thin line to the back of this pin and I like to have where the opening, so the, where the hinge is for it to be at the top of it. And you're just gonna attach it directly to the back, like so. Very, very simple, very fun and beautiful. And there you have it, an adorable felted floral pin. Um, yes, Christy, you definitely need to try it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for being here, Mariana. Um, it's always good to see you here. Again, if you'll have any questions about felting, please let me know. It has been so much fun to learn about felting and I'm starting to do more advanced techniques like sculpting and so forth. But I love to focus on the beginner friendly because ultimately I just want you to start creating. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. But if you want to snag my felting for beginners course, Needle Felting 101, I'm offering it to you for $20 today with the code LIVE. If you use the code LIVE at checkout, you can get my course for $20. And you can also find in the description below the course as well as my free tool guide for all of my favorite needle felting tools, as well as some fun blog posts for more inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. I hope you have a beautiful Monday and I will talk to you soon.